Hey everyone, welcome to the Conquering Together podcast. My name is Ian and this is my dad. I'm Jared. If you're new here, our mission is to create strong and present parents in their children's lives and also influence the next generation. Welcome to the show. Um, Because I kind of had to sell my gun after I actually uh, lost the... (laughs) court case too yeah. <laughs> so it didn't have a barrel <laughs> it's kind of a good thing <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, yeah so yeah no i uh yeah so that was kind of a good thing so yeah i i, I decided to drink and numb the pain hmm. i did everything i could um short of hardcore drugs which trust me i so was around them and wanted to do them yeah so badly but i what stopped me was your brothers Hmm. because if i got caught hardcore drugs they were gone yeah and that's the only thing that stopped me from doing it only thing that stopped me from doing it Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise i would have done it easily yeah i was around it i had every drug you could think of literally in my face Mm. um and uh yeah that's why that jelly roll song save me uh is basically that's my 2018 to 2021 yeah save me by jelly jelly roll yeah that's a uh yeah I've, i've listened to it it's um that was me and I do like how you, you know, have these these songs to perfectly represent kind of your your thoughts and your mind in, in those times. So it does give me good insight on um, where exactly you were at that point. Um, you, you, I mean, your own mind. You were bad for your your. Oh, health. my mind! Oh, trust me, in my mind, <sighs> golly. It's scary. I didn't want to be there. Right. I I mean, what I realized, uh, and it took me until 2021 to realize that silence is deadly to me. Um, Don't, I can't be anywhere silent. If I'm silent for even just five minutes, that's bad because my mind, I mean, it, and, and it, it goes for everybody. Your mind is your biggest killer. Yeah. You let those negative thoughts seep into your brain. Man, I had so many, so many, especially because of you, uh, because of that incident with you, not you, but the incident with you. Yeah. I mean, how many people called me a monster? How many people called me an abuser? How many people called me just a terrible father? I'm Mm -hmm. like, you're right. I am those things. I am those things. And I just, I let it get to me um, so many times. And I had literally my mom, your gram, uh, Gary, my therapist. I mean, they just had to, I, was, I spent hours on the phone with them trying yeah. to trying to talk to them um, trying 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 to rationalize my thoughts yeah. and I, I didn't want to talk to anybody else in the family about it because I was too embarrassed I was too ashamed felt yeah. too much guilt to basically be like they're gonna judge me they're gonna think t- terrible of me they're going to just say oh you you need god or you need this or you need that i i mean i mean to be honest with you there was a point in time where i was told that if i got it was my relationship with god at least this is how i interpreted it um it was later corrected but basically someone said that uh you know you need to get right with God, paraphrasing. Uh, You need to get right with God in order to fix the stuff with your kids. And I said, if God actually was the reason for me to lose my kids, I want nothing to do with your God. I was done. Yeah. 
I was done. That Sean Leon song with Kanye West, Burn Everything. Yeah. That was me. Burn mm-hmm. it all. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Just leave mm-hmm. me alone. Mm-hmm. But nobody knew that. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew that. Because if I said it out loud, they'd think I was crazy. Mm. But that's just where my mind was at. So what did I do? I masked it. I masked it by going and drinking and having fun with people. But in the back of my head, I was just in pain. Yeah. I would be laughing. People, I mean, I'd be cracking everybody up just having a grand old time. But trust me, in the back of my head, mad rage. Mm-hmm. So loneliness. Yeah. Even though I'm in a room full of people, I felt alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is that the only two people that you had? Um, your mom and your. Th- your therapist? Those were the only two people that knew the most, and even they did not know everything. Yeah. In terms of people who were on your side? Um. <sighs> Genuine. Look, I lost a lot of friends yeah. through, through the divorce. Yeah. And rightfully so, not rightfully so, let someone else decide that. Yeah. I don't want to decide that. Um, but I did have two good friends, um, Bert and Fred. Not Bert and Ernie, but Bert and Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but yet they knew a lot, but I didn't tell them everything because I didn't want to lose them. We, we would have a lot of fun. So they were my outlet to just kind of release. Um, I had relationships with girlfriends um, and I would lean on them a lot, um, more than what I should have. And it's not, it wasn't their place. They couldn't handle that. That's not fair to them. And I drove them away. Um, I drove a lot of women away because of it. Um, But people who actually understood me, people who were actually trying to be a positive influence in my life and they could handle it, yeah, it's just my mom and my therapist. Hmm. That was it. Right. Couldn't lean on you kids. That was not right. Even though I did at times to your brothers, um, I just broke down. But yeah, no, they're really, that was it. That's all I had. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you went through a huge period of, of loneliness and um, coping, coping with the issues that you face. And I think that's what, um, a lot of guys do really well um, instead of, I mean, you even said it yourself, you couldn't sit there in a quiet room with your thoughts for more than five, ten minutes. Um, and that is a, that's a tough thing um, to, to know about yourself because, you, I mean, if you can't sit there in your thoughts, um, then how are you how are you staying away from those thoughts? And for you, it was, it was the drinking, it was the, the having fun with people and ignoring the problem that um, you had in front of you. Yeah. So what is, what, what is the, what is the path away from that? What did you do um, to kind of, how to get out of it? How'd you fix it? Yeah. How'd you get out of it? <sighs> slow healing process. Cause I'm, I'm sure it was, it was very slow. slow. Um, well, I mean, it was 2021 and I had just, a relationship I was in had ended um, and 
I had a lot of time to myself because it was really the first time that I was alone because I jumped from relationship to relationship to relationship. There was always a woman in my life, just depending on how you know close they were, but there was always a woman in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the first time I actually was by myself. Um, and I just started to realize I needed to do better. Mm-hmm. Um, I stopped the drinking a ton, um, and mainly because I'm getting lost a lot of friends. Um, uh, so I spent a lot of alone time, and I also um, I had moved uh, out of my girlfriend's house into um, a house by myself. So that I took a lot of extra expenses, and I realized, ooh, I don't have a lot of money. I need to go get a second job. So basically, I worked two jobs, too. So I didn't really have a lot of social time. Yeah. Uh, and I was also exhausted because I was working two jobs. Yeah. So I you know, kind of just had a lot of alone time. Mm. And, and through that alone time, I started to really have time to start thinking about, what do I really want to do? What really is my passion why what's something i you know what's what is what makes me get up in the morning yeah. um, because currently what i'm doing is not what's what i want to get up in the morning to do yeah. uh, i'm surviving so i did that um and then uh, yeah i was i was, I was uh, out of a relationship for I don't know, almost a, almost a year, mm-hmm. almost a year, I think. Um, that's like nine, ten months I'm mm-hmm. out of a relationship, and then uh, yeah, yeah. And I it think it's Im- yeah, I think it's important to 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 highlight some of those things there, um, and there's recurring themes for what has helped me through um, tough periods of my time too, uh, in my life um, too. So there's, first of all, you said you stop the drinking. Um, and that's, um, first of all, straying away from that, that thing to distract you, getting away from the distractions, first of all. Um, Although the women, not all distractions went away, I have to of say course. that. Yeah, yeah of course, definitely. of course. I still, I still had my vice. Yeah, but getting, you know, di- placing some distance between there um, and also just kind of realizing you said you realized you needed to do better self-reflection i think is like a really important thing um it's more financially better i wanted because i was like mm-hmm. i'm not gonna go anywhere with what i'm doing i need to financially get into a better spot and yeah. so that's where i decided to do that and i wanted to set out and do something yeah so yeah so first of all cutting out distractions then reflecting um, obviously there, th- these are, these, these things were done in your own way and like a mild way, but it was mm-hmm. so much better from where you were before. Right. Yeah. And it allowed you to enter the place to make a change. Um, and I'm saying this to, to, to put into perspective how you actually get out of, out of this, this hole, um, of how you hate your life and you're drowning away in maybe the bottle or your thoughts or whatever your vice might be. Um, how do you get out of that? And um, so you, you have these, these things, um, the, the distractions, um, trying to distance yourself between them, um, the reflection, and then also you, you start to implement the changes um, in your life that, that you can. It's, yeah, start, started somewhat of a healing yeah. process but i mean not not an it wasn't it wasn't until 2023 the, the full healing process really started that's when it really yeah. started but yeah. as, in terms of the the, the numbing catalyst. i mean I, I like i said i had my vice i still yeah. numbed the pain through my vice yeah um but the drinking definitely 
cut back um, considerably. And I, um, and you know, that, that kind of stuff still, I mean, there was, there was still a lot there and uh, it just, I got better at started getting better in 2021, Mm. but I didn't really start the healing process until 2023, October to Mm -hmm. be exact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I obviously know what you're referring to. Um, that was when kind of I reached out again and um, a, a quick precursor to that, um, how we reignited our relationship. Um, we, man, of, of course, it was, it was important to me. Um, that's why I wanted to do it. Um, and so back to what I was saying, like as a kid, when I had that, that piece away from, um, you know, going and seeing you, th- that stuck with me for a while um, because I was young and I think, in, in a way, I think just two-dimensionally, if I am not having a good time somewhere um, and I'm like really upset and I get mad often, I'm gonna kind of want to stay away from that. Like I, I, I want to get away from that. Fair. So I'm happy that now I'm away from the anger and pain. Um, and I think just very two dimensionally. Um, so, but then I later, of course, it would grow over the years. Um, the, the understanding, like, man, I don't have a dad. Um, like I just, I identified, yeah, I don't have a dad. I wouldn't, I would, I would tell everyone that, you know, I didn't have a dad if they would ask. Um, he's just not in my life. Um, and Fair. so um, but it would grow over the years, the fact, like, how much it would affect me. Um, and, I, I mean, it affected me every in every way from me clinging on to masculine role models in my life um, to, to fill that gap. Um, because as a young man trying to grow up um, in probably the most important years that you would need a masculine role model, um, 13 to 18, um, 18 or 19, um, I, I, I 20 needed te- that technically. Yeah, <laughs> I guess, I guess technically 20. Um, so I, I was trying to find these things because, um, that's just what the, the heart clings to as like a young man. Um, you're trying to find that. And so I would find that in coaches and teachers and, um, people online that, that I would see, um, maybe just, just random people that I would, I would even see on the street. I'm like, man, that's like, I can see like that. That's a, that's a man I would want to like be. That's a man that I would want to follow after. Um, so it would even become things. I would just see a guy walking down the street. I'm like, wow, that's, that's, that's a man that I want to resemble. Um, and so this is what I always clinged for. Um, and I didn't really ever get the fullness of it that yeah. I was hoping for, um, for sure. Makes I sense. think that the the full um, the full male role model comes from your dad. I I truly do believe there's not only a blood connection, but it's as we were saying at the beginning, it's um, it, it's it's that unconditional love um, mm-hmm. that a father will always have for their kids. Um, that just a un- a teacher or a coach can't give you because that's, you know, they only give that to their kids. Um, but also, so I did have like these figures in my life that I would try to follow never fully resonated with me and made me kind of a shell of the purse that I feel like the man I was supposed to be. Um, and, um, I was always, it obviously caused a lot of lasting issues in my own brain. And, um, as I was, navigating the world um it i didn't have like the the father to um to to give me the positive affirmation that i needed as i said that was a a big thing for me um because with these other male role models they would give me the tough love they would give me um like oh man you know i want you to do better because you can be great you know um i want you to 
do this and that um, in that way because you know I do care about you. You you gotta you gotta go and just you know stop doing this. You, it, it's it's the kind of like tough masculine love that that is supposed to like you know forge a son you know like like iron, but at the same time it needs to be kind of cooled every now and then. Um, you need the 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 affirmation and the love that comes from an, that a father would normally give a son, but those figures didn't give that to me because I was not their son. Um, that that's the role of the father. Um, so that really affected me because I would constantly get struck down and I would never be lifted back up really. And that created a lot of negative self identification in my, in my brain thinking that, Oh, I'm not living up to everything. I'm supposed to be in school. I'm supposed to be this, this smart kid that everyone told me I always was. Um, you are. You actually are. You were tested your genius level. <laughs> well, thank you. But <laughs> it's in, in middle school and onward in high school, I always felt like I was missing the par. Um, uh, everyone, I, I would fall behind in school and I would ha- have no, 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 no assurance that I was actually able to do it and capable of doing it. I would just shoot myself down saying, dang, dude, you failed. You are a failure. And now you just got to go on to the next thing and hopefully not feel that. I didn't understand the concept of failure. Um, it took me forever to, f- to realize that failure is just an option. And, and like, it's a part of life. Failure is a part of life, right? As long as you learn and from it's it. an opportunity to get up and learn from it. I never learned from failure. I thought that if I failed at something, it was because I'm not meant to do it and I'm not good enough to do it. So I need to just move on to something else. So um, this, I, I, I saw myself as less than. This translated to school, translated to sports, translated to social, social scenarios. Um, I did not, I, I was not a social guy. I couldn't make friends super easy well I kept a very close circle of friends I couldn't talk to new people very easily Mm -hmm. um and I'd be very closed off to the world but once you got to know me then I would open up a little bit because um I'd feel I'd feel safe how'd that go when you opened up um people obviously liked me the people that were close to me they really liked me and I was I liked the fact that I could be myself around a lot of people um, but I would always be also like more of a people pleaser. Um, I would have different personalities for different friend groups. Um, and just, I'd, I would genuinely just be on my tippy toes everywhere I would go, um, with social scenarios. Cause I had such negative, um, Is it you thoughts to be accepted? about myself. Exactly. It was acceptance. Uh, of course. Um, and so this is just where I was and it continually got worse the more I went into high school and everything. Um, and, um, I, I, I didn't know how to get out of it at all. I didn't know how to escape these negative thoughts about myself. Um, but over time, uh, I think as I had times where I could face a failure. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Um, if I faced a failure, then I would grow so much from that because I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa I just, I failed, but then I got it back up and tried again. Gotcha. And this is like new for me. This is, this is new territory for me. Um, and I started um, doing harder things. I would um, pick up skills like working out or I would go in branch out to other people and become friends with other people or I would try to do um, just harder things in general. Um, And um, I'd say senior year of high school, I definitely opened up just to people um, in my grade a a lot easier. Um, And I slowly gained some social confidence back um, for sure. And because senior year is when I actually, I chose to get away from football. I didn't like football. Um, I didn't like the way I was treated in football. I um, then went and did what I wanted to do, which was work out at the gym. 
And so I now did something that I enjoy to do. And you're a certified personal trainer now. I'm a personal trainer, exactly. Um, and uh, so that picking up that hobby has definitely served me well. Um, and I was able to learn a lot uh, through just enjoying the gym in general. Like I enjoyed the gym a lot. Um, and I saw it as just like my time of peace and serenity. Um, <laughs> And uh, in in a in a weird way. I know. I just I'm sitting here thinking of the, the fact of what just a couple of weeks ago you were at my house. You had your hand, your legs up above your head, bench pressing 145 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, 145 five. 135 pounds is is nothing nothing at all <laughs> but well no it's like you're you're like you were like curled up around yeah and yeah. we were all like what are you doing the, yeah. and then you threw a dart literally through the dartboard through the dartboard yeah yeah you're, you're that strong well yeah so working out has served me well over the years but um so i've i worked past um a lot of the the negative things that have um, came from I would say from a, of course a lack of a father figure in my life um, I think it did cause a lot of those issues and it was the root of it but then it wasn't the ag actual reasoning for a lot of it but it definitely could have helped if I had a father kind of guiding me along that that way sure um, sure but still on the other side of things I came out better than I feel like most people would if they didn't have a, a father in their life. I'm, I'm fortunate to um, have a lot of standards for my myself and um, a lot of growth on my end. Um, so, and, and the reason, the way I got to the point where I wanted to accept you back into my life. Um, yeah. I, Tell me about that. I definitely, um, so, it was mainly my relationship um, with God, um, because as as a lot of people understand about um, Christianity, then there is the whole concept of Jesus, and and God forgives us of our sins because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, um, and um, understanding the concept of forgiveness took a while for me, but once I did, and the more I learned about it then the more I learned about how important it is to forgive people because it clearly says in the Bible that you will not be forgiven and your prayers will not be um, really answered and until you forgive those who have wronged you um, in your heart. You have to forgive them. And, and forgiveness is such a big thing because if God is able to go and send a son to die for us and in turn forgive us, um, of our, our sins. He died for our sins so that we may be forgiven. And that is a selfless act for him not even knowing who we are. Um, who are we to not forgive like a loved one? Who are we to not forgive um, just another person on this earth that is equal to us? Um, th this perfect human Jesus has gone and died for us. He has no reason to die for us even because he is clearly literally perfect and we can't even just forgive a brother next to us um, or a loved one next to us because they wronged us in a, a small way so this concept of forgiveness rang in my head for many years um, probably a, uh, I'd probably say like two or three years um, and it grew over time I heard more about it and people would talk to me um, and it kind of just became clear, like, I need to take a step of forgiveness. Um, there's a clear wall that has been placed in my life that I feel like if I did not break down this wall, I was stagnant. I was stuck. I was not going to grow um, in the character that I um, need to, to, to fulfill. I was not going to become the person that I need to actually become if I did not forgive you. Um, and... So understanding that you had gone and texted me, um, happy birthday again. And uh, I believe yep. you, so this is my my 20th birthday. Um, yep. After On your I birthday. Had, yes. Late at night, I think it was like 9 or 10 o'clock. Yes. 
Yes, because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still caught it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, this is in October. Um, on my birthday, um, later at night, did you invite me? I did. I said that uh, I said, happy birthday, son. If you'd like to go grab a bite to eat or s to celebrate, let me know. Yeah. And I'm really thankful for this because actually um, for, for you to know, like, um, so at this time of my life, I have gotten out of a relationship and um, I'm in like a pretty low point in my life um, right now. I'm trying to become the man that I want to be so badly um, on my own and um, reflecting on how poorly I um, was living before and how much I wanted to um, just step into this new version of myself. And um, I, I knew I needed for, to forgive you. I just, I, I would pray often like for a, a opportunity, opportunity to, yeah, I would. I would. Um, I wanted an opportunity to, and so this arised and, um, man, was it hard to just kind of step into it. Like I just, I didn't want to at all cause it felt so uncomfortable. It's like over the years, um, comfortability has been a big battle that I had to, to fight I and I was comfortable with where I was not having a dad. And I felt like, man, when I go and talk to the, him again, and I have to face all the things that we have gone through, it's going to be a lot of effort. It's going to be yeah. a lot of effort to do. Um, I know. And it's going to be a long, hard battle um, to, but, but to, to conquer it. it. And, I, and I did. I took that step. Um, and, man, I yeah. I, I can't remember. Did, did I send a flurry of texts? I want to say I, I tried not to. Because I was like, oh, man, I do not. I just was like, okay, let's go. Where do we want to go? Let's go right now. I mean, I know you were in yeah. the mountains uh, and yeah. whatnot. But, oh, uh, man, I was so ready to yeah. just celebrate your birthday. First time in six years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and, yeah, I attribute that to I'm just in a low point in my life. And I'm like, well. If I want to make a change, can't be any lower, I guess. Right. If why, I want to make a change, why don't you bring the the, the dad well. along? <laughs> no, that was I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. No, that wasn't it. It's just man. I'm it's kidding. Just, I'm kidding. If I'm if I want to make a change, like no, nah, I know. I this, get it. I get it. This get is it. a time when I'm like, anything that is uncomfortable is probably the best for me right now. Yeah. Um, well, get, so what do I say? I did it. Uh, get get comfortable in the uncomfortable. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, trust me, I was nervous too. How, I mean, like, I remember there was a time I didn't even recognize your voice. Yeah. I heard it in the background. Yeah. Of a phone call? Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea that that was your voice. Yeah. So I was nervous too. Like, what do I say? Am I going to offend him? Is he going to get up and leave? What what, what do we do? Yeah. What do we do? But. I just tried to keep it light and I tried to keep it to what we did mm -hmm. and what, and what we did is we ate hot chicken. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> at the, it, at it was the kind of OG to, of Nashville, Prince's hot chicken. Yeah. So we, we went over to Prince's hot chicken, which is really good chicken. And I actually delicious. had never, never been before that. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of a thing. I do. Re I, I like that idea because there was um, a time before where we would go and just to hang out. Then we'd you would invite food. me to hot chicken or we'd hot go, food in general. We do hot food. Yes, you could eat hot food. You, right. All you had been able to do that since you were one years old. You yeah. Were, you were eating salsa at the at a Mexican restaurant. You just take it and dip it up. <laughs> drink the salsa. Yeah, and uh, that love for chips and salsa has not faded yet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. So, but, I bet. I bet. No. Yeah. So and and so this was a really cool opportunity to go and do that, um, reconnect through that, and we had great conversation during we it. We did. We did um, till 
two thirty in the morning. Yeah, and so we yeah we were in the parking lot till two thirty in the morning <laughs> talking and just about things in general. And Everything. I remember catching up on six years, man. Yeah, it's awesome. I loved it. Yeah, it was it was it was cool. It was I cool. went home and I couldn't sleep for at least an hour or two hours. I got, I think I mm-hmm. got like one hour of sleep that night, but mm-hmm. I felt so refreshed. Probably the best one of the best night sleeps I've had. Yeah, and that came out of just. Um, dropping the feelings of it being awkward and weird and abnormal. And, um, basically we both had to humble ourselves to just let it happen. And, um, obviously I had forgiven you way beforehand. So it's not like I had to face the forgiveness of you that night. Um, but that is a process of healing. You have to forgive the person first and then you drop everything that is in the in the past yep and you literally just take a step in and just see what happens and pretty much every time it's going to go so much better than you think because that went way better than i expected i didn't know how well the conversation was going to flow and look where it's led yeah we're down doing a podcast together we're conquering together that's right and maybe we can be a hope and a light to those out there that are going through similar things so um yeah just come along with us um there we can god bless no stress god bless no stress see you next time love you son see you next time love you too hey guys if you like what you heard we appreciate a like share subscribe we hope it helps you as much as it does us whether you're on the uphill or the downhill you are not alone until next time keep conquering together.